So hi, mic is on. How are you doing? My name is Arndt Eriksson. I'm creative director from Norway. How many of you guys know about Norway? Oh, quite a few. Normally it's like, oh yeah, that's the capital of Sweden. But no, it's not. <laughs> it's a country. Um, so I come from a little place in the north of Norway that looked like this in the winter. Um, 1,800 people. That's where I grew up. And um, from there, we moved a lot uh, from the age of nine. Uh, not because my dad is in the army or something, but he's a printer. Uh, go figure. And he made me interested in the advertising industry. So I started working as creative, and I've been doing that for 20 years now. And um, it's kind of interesting how communication has changed over the past years. So one thing uh, I learned pretty fast when I started working in advertising is the AIDA model. So attention, interest, desire, action. And that's the journey that every customer has to go through in a way to purchase a product. So when uh, I started working in advertising, of course, that's what I knew as well, the AIDA model. And um, at some point, I was working as a creative director at, the, at an agency, and this was back in 2007. And I was asked to start working with Twitter. This social media thing is going to change everything. You have to learn about it, and you have to transition and merge the interactive department with the creative department. And you have to figure out what this Twitter thing is. We're sure that it's going to change everything, and it's going to be all about social media, and all the traditional media is gone. And I was like, come on, really? Um, but OK, I said, let's tr try. And um, when I started doing this, I started following my own advertising model, which is kind of Greek for most people. Uh, but it's kind of obvious as well. So it says 1RE square SAG, which means when you communicate with people, you have to have one message. That message has to be relevant. It has to be engaging, and it has to be emotional. And when everyone else sig, then sag. So when everyone's doing one thing, do the opposite. So I started doing that when I started Twittering as well. And I also followed some advice from Guy Kawasaki so that said, be authentic, be honest, be yourself. So through the first three, four months, I started connecting with a lot of people. And these are some of the first people that I started connecting with and started to interact with. And it was like a whole new world that opened up to me. And I was amazed of the power that Twitter was giving me. Um, and of course, one of those was uh, Jeff Pulver, of course, Gary Vaynerchuk, a lot of other interesting thought leaders that kind of was inspiring for me and gave me the idea how to use social media in a good way. And that also led me to this guy. Um, I, I, I was using Twitter like 18, 18 hours a day, and every morning I woke up and I was going through my emails to see, okay, who's been following me? Because it was like kind of an addiction. <laughs> how many followers do I have? And then suddenly this guy appeared in my following, and I was like, really, Ted Chris? No, can't be real. And back then, he was following like 300 people, and he, followed 400, he was followed by 400,000. And I was like, can this be real? Was it like a mistake? So I just said to him, hi, Ted. Nice of you to connect. Um, why? <laughs> and he said, well, you know what? You're kind of a curator of interesting stuff, so I like what you're doing. And out of the blue, I was suddenly invited to come to New York in 2009, and I had lunch with Chris, and it was an amazing moment. And I just sat and think, wow. Twitter brought me here. For some reason, I'm sitting in the office of TED, the curator of TED, which is the most amazing conference of bringing ideas to people, and he's sitting there wanting to talk to me. Now that's Twitter. So from there, I decided I have to, to work on my model. Um, since I'm working in communication, I have to transist everything that I learned from AIDA into social media. And I tried to figure out a way to make it more tangible, make it more understanding to the corporations that I work with. And the first phase I decided that, that I needed to clarify was the find phase. So the find phase goes about how to get a, um, attention and how to engage, which is kind of like you have to be innovative, you have to be creative. So how do you draw attention to you as a brand? 
The second phase is the like phase, where people have accepted you as a person or as a relationship or as a brand. And then they start building that relationship. They start engaging with you and they start accepting the products or the services that you offer. And then the last phase is the love phase. And when I talk to this to, to my clients, a lot of brands, they are always like, oh, you want, to, you want to give us love. And of course, that's what we want. We want love from the people that we are connected to. And through building these relationships by obtaining love, it makes us give something and makes us build something strong. The interesting thing is, this works really well for me professionally. This model works really well. It's the, the customer journey and it makes everything goes around in circles and as long as I take care of these relationships, it really works well. But what was, was interesting was that back in 2008, I was connected with this lady. Um, she was looking for art directors. She was working in Germany, I was working in, in Norway. And she sent a tweet and said that, hi, let's connect. And I thought, okay. So we built a relationship. We started just tweeting randomly once in a while. And that changed into something more personal. Suddenly we were friends on Facebook. Th this is her about info, which I think is awesome. And it describes her perfectly. For example, equipped with anti-fashion -fas handicaps, point version 1.9, as well as annoying sarcasm 7.1, working on the beta new version. So, of course, you have to be interested, right? So that was the like phase. And before you know it, we suddenly had a journey ourselves. So we met in 2008. We had interaction in 2010. We started Skyping, video Skyping, more and more every day. Suddenly it was like six hours a day video Skyping. Then I invited her to come to Norway. So I said, okay, you owe me Christmas present for the past three years. So I think you actually have to come here and we have to meet. So we met in, in real life and now, one year later, we're married. <laughs> so this is just, to me, the proof that Twitter builds relationships. Social media builds strong relationships. And if you stay authentic, if you stay true, and if you focus on building that one message that is relevant, that is engaging and emotional, and that is different, you actually can make a change. This has also led me to do the, a conference myself in Oslo called the Rethink Conference, because based on the models that I have developed, I also discovered that most corporations have to rethink the way they do business. They kind of have to do control, alt, delete, and just say that all the marketing plans we have from before, we just have to scrap them. We have to start all over. And because of my network, I've now been so lucky to have had a lot of thought leaders to be in Norway, to come to Norway, which is kind of, it's a 12-hour flight. And you have to stay there for three hours, three days at least, just to have the strength to go on stage. But they come, and some of them stay for a week, and they enjoy the Nordics, and they enjoy the, the scenery and everything, and, and enjoy the fact that we're trying to make a difference. Um, because that's the conference is all about. It's an intersection of ideas and principles within business marketing, social business marketing. And that's a cool thing. And I wouldn't be there if it hadn't been for my, my entry into social media. Which also led me here. So thanks to Twitter, I connected with Jeff. He was looking for speakers and then we connected and, and he said to me, okay, so what's your story? So the brand new co economy sounds kind of like corporate. I said, well, it's not, because actually I have a personal story. I just shared it with you. Um, it's how all these connections actually matter. And I wouldn't be here if it wouldn't be for that. So I'm in New York now, and I think it is amazing that this journey has brought me here. So the fact is, you, ha you have to remember that you are a brand. So take care and take ownership of you as a brand. Once you've started, you're past the point of no return. You can never go back. And your connections, they expect to reach you. So if you're there, be available, be present, but of course, be authentic. And don't do everything, but at least do something. So that was also something that I really realized pretty early in the, in the process back in 2007, 2008, that when I tried to do everything, blogging, tweeting, tumbling, Facebook, YouTube, everything, I was like fatigued. It's impossible. Even though I was spending 18 hours online, it was impossible to do everything. So then I figured out, okay, it's enough to do something. 
and it works. And I also had to remember that perfection is the enemy of good. So that's also something that I want to give to you. So that's my story, my journey. I went from 1,800 people to 7 billion people because I'm now a citizen of the world. The world is a small place, and anyone, anywhere, can connect to everyone, everywhere. And I'm just amazed and appreciative for everything that social media has given me. So, thank you. And please connect to me here. I'm available, and I'm gonna be around talking to you guys later. Thank you.